Lonka, the dancing girl. After the islanders in the Eastern Ocean had found out how rich Korea was, they were not satisfied with their own land. They seemed to have eyes like dragonflies that wanted everything they saw. They kept on borrowing until they got many of the plants and animals which they now possess, which as everybody knows came from the land of morning glory. Even the Neko, or Korean cat, was carried over to the islands, though in some way it lost its tail on the voyage or else had it bobbed. This is the reason why poor cats in these islands seems to carry around with her something like a corkscrew instead of a tail. Moreover, when the Korean puss that had so long been accustomed to scrambling over the roofs and back alleys at home was introduced into the islands, it was thought to be a wild animal and for a long time was treated as a fox or badger would be. However, because it kept down the rats and the mice, this bobtailed puss was highly valued. Yet not content with borrowing so many things, the greedy Al men thought they might as well have all Korea and everything in it, and then go further and overrun China. So they sent a great army in a mighty fleet of ships to invade the Koreans' country. They took horses with them, but as their soldiers were fed chiefly on rice, salt fish and pickles, they did not need any wagons. They had only oxen to draw their carts, for they had never trained horses to pull anything, but only to be pack and saddle animals. This army of islanders marched to the capital, in which were palaces and pagodas. Then they sent one of their armies along the seafront, and another along the west coast. They expected to march into China, but two things happened to prevent this. So, after they had wasted and tarried in the country for five years, they gave it up and were sent home flying. From the north, a Chinese army came to the help of the Koreans and drove the Isle men to the coast. But when they got there they found their ships were gone. A clever Korean admiral had invented an ironclad ship that rammed and sunk their war junks. So their army had to wait till a new fleet of ships had been built, and then came over to take them back. But before the islanders left Korea, they smashed statues and monuments, broke up images and even the observatories for the study of the stars. They took marble pagodas apart to load on their ships and carry away. They enticed, or forced to go with them, hundreds of the Korean potters, artists, and craftsmen. For by this time, the islanders had given up living in huts of straw and roving about like Arabs or gypsies. They had cities with paved streets as in Korea, though they had none of the beautiful marble pagodas and images and temples, for everything was of wood, while thousands of large buildings and images in Korea were of stone, chiseled into beautiful forms. Now in Korea there were some beautiful daughters of the land, and many noblemen and men of courage, who determined not to be carried away from their dearly beloved country. Of this, in southern Korea, the rock of the fallen flower is to this day the witness. Over 300 years ago, when the Koreans' enemies came, they encamped in a town where lived a beautiful dancing girl named Lonka. Being a geisha or accomplished young lady, she could sing beautifully. The islanders took this lovely damsel prisoner and made her a waitress in the general's tent. One night a great banquet was given in a famous pleasure hall named the Cliff House, because it was built on the high bank overlooking a deep river. All the chief captains were invited, and the large room was illuminated with a thousand wax lights. These were tall and square candles molded into a beautiful shape, and each one was painted and decorated with figures of flowers, birds, and pet animals. Very odd and ornamental is a Korean candle. Oh how charming was the dancer, and what a beautiful sight to behold was her graceful posing, Four Korean dances tell stories of birds and flowers, of summer, and of lovely snow-covered landscapes in winter, of a boat in a storm, of a tiger in a trap, of a brave soldier in battle, or a sad lady in the palace, or of the fairy tales of the Western Queen Mother and many others. Those who watch the dance and know the manners and customs, the dancer's gestures and poses, the motions of her fan and sleeves, besides the games of the children, the sports of the people, the harvest songs and the fun at the festivals, can read because they see the story of each told in most graceful motions. There are several languages besides words which are spoken, and these appeal to the eye, instead of the ear. The pretty dancer was robed in pure white, with ermine-edged slippers, and jeweled girdle, and her shining hair was done up like a queen's. Loud was the applause among the spectators at the end of every dance. After the dinner was over, the general of the islanders grew very lively because he had drunk much wine, and was not satisfied to see the dances of the lovely girl. Some of the rude soldiers also wanted to waltz with the beautiful maiden, 
But it was not the custom for Korean virgins to dance or waltz with male partners, for in this country of gentle manners, dancing is by the sexes apart. Yet the rough islanders insisted and forced her so hard, that she felt that both her own modesty and her country were outraged. She thought of the thousands of her countrymen, brothers, fathers, and friends, who had died on the battlefield in defending their beloved land. Why should not she? So, pretending to yield to her country's enemies, she drew the general out of the banqueting hall and down toward the river, close to the edge of the rock. Before he knew her purpose, she seized his hands and leaped out, dragging her enemy with her over the cliff, and both passed into the other world. She died for her country. To this day, the rock of the falling flower is pointed out, and the story is told that here was exhibited a woman's devotion to her country. Around this rock poets have entwined their verses, while romantic associations cluster like the azalea flowers that cover the hills of Korea with a riot of color, making their land seem to the natives the most beautiful on earth.